Hello, welcome to Begin Within. I am Jamie Chapman. Today we are going to talk about how to portray confidence during an interview. Portraying confidence is one of the most important pieces of interviewing in general. If you follow these tips, it will help you appear confident even if you're not. The funny thing about interviews is that they are society's accepted form of being judgmental. People sit in an interview and they are being judged 100% by the interview panel. And that's okay according to society. But as the interviewee, it's nerve wracking to know that these people are judging you in the way that they are. We cannot change the judgmental nature of interviews, but we can change the way we appear, even if we don't feel so confident. The first tip is to use the doorway drill. The doorway drill is from Jordan Harbinger of Advanced Human Dynamics, and he talks about, to get in the habit of doing this, sticking a post-it note in the middle of your door, eye level, so that when you walk through a doorway, you see this visual reminder to be confident. I would say not only when you pass through a door, but also when you're walking down a hallway or in a lobby, maybe if you're going in and out of an elevator, any kind of transitional place that you're in, use this drill because it will help you appear confident even if you don't feel like you are. And that appearance is what a lot of people judge your first impression on. Especially for a job interview, one of the first places you're gonna run into the hiring manager is in the lobby wherever you're waiting for your interview and you'll be sitting in a chair, they'll walk in, you'll stand up, shake hands, and bada bing, bada boom, first impression has already been made. So it's the most important time for you to be considerate of your body language. The next thing we're gonna talk about is power poses. Now during the actual interview itself, maybe don't do the power poses, but the point of them is to get you confident beforehand. A power pose is something I learned about on TED Talk. It was through Amy Cuddy's TED Talk called your body language may shape who you are. And she discusses high power poses versus low power poses. And the difference between those and how you look is amazing. A high power pose means that you're taking up space. Your territory is bigger. You're smiling. You're using good posture. You're physically larger because you're using high power poses. This makes you appear more confident. And the more confident that you appear, the better your interview is probably going to go. A low power pose is the complete opposite. Instead of opening up and taking up space, you're closing up and you're trying to be as small as possible. And this is okay in certain situations, but not for a job interview because you look sheepish and you look scared. We want to look confident in what we're saying. And the interviewer knows that you're nervous but you don't want to show any pieces of being nervous as long as you can help your body language. So when you cross your legs and you cross your arms or you put your hands in your lap, when you maybe do protective movements with your hands, those things make you look nervous. So high power poses versus low power poses in a job interview, be confident, take up space and use high power poses. The next thing we're going to talk about is nervous tics. Nervous tics make you look so nervous. Whenever I was doing my very first big girl job interview, I picked at my fingers right here until it bled. Thankfully, I had on a black suit and I was able to kind of dab my thumb off because it was covered in blood on my pants and I couldn't tell that there was a blood stain there. But that means that I was really nervous. I didn't do a good job in the interview. I didn't get the job. Half the reason I didn't do a good job in the interview is because my hand was bleeding and I was trying to hide it under the table in my lap. Now, with that being said, nervous tics are easy to combat as long as you're aware of them. If you're a woman, don't wear your hair like I have mine right now. Pull it back halfway like this, put it up, wear it in a clippy all the way up. But if you are like me, if you are doing something that makes you nervous, the hair is the first thing that you go for. Some people pick fingers or maybe click a pen or flick a pen around in their hand But whatever your nervous tick is, just make sure that you're aware of it because then you can do something proactive to combat the tick. So in my case, I get nervous, I mess with my hair, I put my hair up, I pick at my hands, I hold a pen. If I pick at my hands, I hold a pen, just, I just hold a pen. And that alone, because I'm not, I'm not one to mess with the pen or click it, but just holding the pen 
gives my hands something else to focus on. And if I get really nervous, I can even squeeze a little bit and it kind of helps relieve some stress. Get a grip. Get a grip. Get a grip. It's about handshakes. Sorry about the cheesy humor there. Um, give a firm handshake. I grew up in Oklahoma. We take pride in a firm handshake and looking you square in the eye. Giving a firm handshake is something I actually get comments on all the time because I give a pretty square handshake and they'll make a comment about it. I'm always extremely proud. It goes back to my roots. It's just what we do. Don't overthink a handshake. Give a firm grip and look somebody in the eye and give them a smile. That's all you gotta do. Next, to appear confident in the interview, interview the interviewer. Interview them. The interview is a two-way street. You're not there for them to bombard you with questions and then run out the door as fast as you can when they're done. The interview is a two-way street. They want to ask you questions so that they know you're a good fit for the job, but you want to ask them questions so that you know you'll fit in at their company and that the company's just a good place to work. Please feel free to ask questions that are maybe more simple, that are logistics related, such as, so I noticed on the company website that your walk-in hours are from 10 to 2. Now, what time do the employees come to work? You can ask questions that are related to current events. So for example, if the company is only in one city and you could say, well, I saw where the city just passed this ordinance for building construction. As project managers at this company, have you seen any impacts of that yet? Ask a current events question that has to do and is relevant to the company. You can also interview them about how they like their jobs. Now, obviously you wanna use your judgment when you ask questions like this, but something I like to coach people to do if they feel that the interviews went well, I'll have them say. So I'd like to ask you a couple of questions if that's okay. Or the interviewer might even ask you, so do you have any questions for us? You're allowed to ask questions like, what's your favorite thing about working here? Or what's your least favorite thing about working here? How do you feel that the employees get along? And that kind of thing. Now, obviously, use your judgment. You want to make sure that this question falls into place and that it fits into the interview and doesn't feel awkward when you ask it. Because you want to get the interviewers talking. That's the whole point. You want to be able to pick up on any red flags. If they keep saying, we wear a lot of hats around here, we work outside of our scope, that type of thing means they're overworked. They have to do a lot of people's jobs with just one person. So you want to listen for red flags like that and take note of them so you don't forget. But you also just want to know that you might get along with that person if you're going to be working with them every day. Another thing that I've heard recently, and I really liked the advice, it was from Susie Welch. She said, tell them you want the job. Now you got to toe the line. There's a difference in acting desperate and begging for the job or even saying things like, I need the money. You don't want to say that. But you can express interest and excitement that you want the job. You could simply say, I want this job. I'm excited about this position. When my friend Sally sent it over to me, I thought it would be the perfect match. You can say stuff like that and it doesn't sound desperate. The next thing, listen. So many times people get caught up in thinking about what they want to say next during an interview. And they don't really listen to the question. Make a point to look them in the eye, nod your head, hear everything that they're saying during the interview. And then if you need to take a moment, a pause is all right to jot down key points of the question or to just think through your answer. That's totally okay. And it's not unnatural because sometimes you have to think about your interview answer. It's just normal. The worst thing you can do is to not really pay attention to what they're saying and just start answering the question inside of your brain. That's the worst thing you can do. The next thing, know what you want. This includes knowing what you will and will not tolerate in a job. And so for you, you may not want a mundane job where you have to do the same thing repetitively over and over. You have to know that about yourself. If you don't want a mundane job, then you need a job where some days you can do office work some days you can teach. Some days you can rotate out and do different tasks. You need to know that about yourself before you walk in. But knowing what you want also means that you know what salary that you want. And I'm not talking about a whole salary negotiation class during this segment, but come in with three numbers in mind having done your research for the first interview because it could come up the first time. The three numbers are 
One, rock bottom. Do not accept anything lower than that and be prepared to walk away and say no. Two, know the number that you're actually aiming for and what you expect to get out of the company based on your research. If their average salary for your job title and for however many years of experience that you have is $65,000, make that your middle number. And then there's always the third number, which is the ideal number. Salary negotiations freak people out. Just take a breath and have a conversation. That's all you've got to do. It's not magic. It's not rocket science. It's not some kind of hard bargain. It's a conversation. You just have to take a breath and talk to them. And worst case scenario, if you blunder everything, you'll be okay. Now, Chris Voss wrote Never Split the Difference. He's a former FBI hostage negotiator, and he writes about negotiating in general. Um, The quote I'm going to say here is from him. The key to beginning a haggle is to rattle the other guy ever so gently. You do it in the nicest way possible. Now, when salary negotiations happen, people think that they have to turn on this bulldog assertive person to do a salary negotiation right And that's just not the truth. When it comes to salary negotiations, honey is better than vinegar. And the last thing, be authentic. Like I was just saying for salary negotiations, people think that they have to show up and be some bulldog to negotiate the salary that they want. That's just not the truth. Just be who you are. For the entire interview, don't pretend like you are something that you are not. If they want somebody who is assertive, but you're creative... Who cares? That's just probably not the job for you. Get through the interview as best you can. Be yourself. And if they like you at the end, they like you. And if they don't, you've dodged a bullet. When it comes to portraying confidence, the best thing that you can do is stay true to yourself. Stick to your guns. You know who you are. You know what you like. And you know what you won't tolerate in a job and in coworkers. The person who gets the job in the long run is the confident one. It's the one that's willing to brag about themselves a little bit. And even if it makes you hugely uncomfortable to do that, as long as you appear comfortable, you'll look confident to the interviewer. Thank you for watching this video with Begin Within. I am Jamie, and I'm so glad you tuned in. Please subscribe to our channel.